chapter 1 verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city in Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, you are greatly and highly favored, for the Lord is with you. Blessed you are among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled, saying, at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said to her, Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call him his name Jesus. And he shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. And the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore... Also, that holy thing, that holy one, that shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. And behold, your cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Let me read that one more time. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be unto me according to your word. And the angel departed from her, and Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste. Nowhere close to this, Delaware. There are no hills here. Unto a city in Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias, and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed you are among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of your salutation sounded in my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is he that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. For he has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty has done me to me great things. And holy is his name. And his mercy is upon them that fear him. From generation to generation, he has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things. The rich he has sent away empty. He has opened the, his servant Israel he, in remembrance of his mercy, as he spake to our fathers and to his seed forever. Oh, the Lord bless the reading of his word. I'm speaking about the handmaid of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, when we read about the handmaid of the Lord, there are two quick things that I want you to just remember and if you don't understand, remember anything else in the message, if you can just hold on to these two, then it will 
last you a while. But the Bible says that she conceived Jesus. So she received Jesus in her womb. How does that speak to you and me? My friends, we can receive Jesus into our soul. We can receive Jesus into our hearts. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 3 verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. And if any man, if any woman hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. Somebody say, into him. And sup with him and he with me. Just like Mary conceived Jesus within her womb, so we can conceive Jesus, receive Jesus into our heart and into our soul. And uh, the Bible tells us in the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 27, it says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. How do you get Christ in there? As you open the door to him, hallelujah, and he comes on in. He's knocking at our heart's door. He knocked at your heart's door when you were without God and without hope in this world. And uh, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years ago, whatever your testimony is, you opened your heart to him. And your empty soul became filled with the Spirit of Christ. Like Mary conceived, like Mary received Jesus supernaturally in her womb, so you and I receive Jesus supernaturally into our spirit man. Can somebody say amen? And brothers and sisters, the interesting thing is in Revelation, when the Bible says, I stand at your door and I knock, is the book was not written to unbelievers though. I applied it to unbelievers now because unbelievers have to hear Jesus knock and they open the door. But in reality, Revelation was not written to unbelievers. It says it was written to the seven angels of the seven churches which are in Turkey. That's the modern translation because that's where they, they were. I was just, this week I'm in contact with this one uh, Muslim man that I met on a, on a plane about five years ago, my way back from India. And uh, he, he could not understand any, any English and I didn't understand no Turkish. But I explained to him by pictures on the piece of paper how to receive Jesus into his heart. I can't tell you that he's received Jesus yet, but he's open. Hallelujah. And he's been asking, he's still on Facebook with me this week. And he said, two hours from here where I live is a place called Ephesiere. Hallelujah. Ephesus. Praise God. And that's what, that was what God was speaking, speaking to the believers in the early church. So why would God say he stands at the door and he knocks? Because sometimes Jesus feels shut out from his own children. His own that he should indwell. Now he's not left you. He still lives you in the spirit. But let me tell you, there is a deeper dimension of fellowship with Jesus to the point where you and I can have a feast with him. It says, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hears my voice, believers, Christians, Open the door and I will come into him and will sup with him. New King James says, I will feast with him and he with me. There's a place of feasting in Jesus. Hallelujah. There's a place of feasting. We've been fasting, Jesus. That's a bad fast. But we got to feast, Jesus. Amen. I'm not talking about food fast. We we fast Jesus sometimes. How many of you gone seven days fasting the word? Didn't read a thing in the word. When seven days fasting prayer, didn't read, didn't pray, talk to God once until next Sunday. How many of you gone on a Jesus fast? That's not a good fast. But Jesus is knocking at your and my heart, and He's saying, "Open the door, and I will come into you and feast with you." Hallelujah. There are dimensions in Jesus that we have not yet tapped into. Oh, it makes me so excited. He said, Brother Joel, what are we going to do in heaven all the time? Man, just think of all the dimensions in Jesus that you found as you keep walking with him in this world in 50 years, 20 years, whatever the case might be. Brothers and sisters, if we got this far, 
with Jesus while we're living in our flesh with a devil in the world trying to distract us from him. How far are we going to go when we are resurrected flesh? Hallelujah. Glorified body with no devil in, he in heaven trying to remove us. And we see him face to face. Let me tell you, a billion years from now, we'll be in a dimension of glory like you won't believe. Hallelujah. Praise God. And eternity itself. Oh my goodness. Will we ever get Will we ever get, oh my goodness, how glorious that is. My brothers and sisters, and then the second thing about Mary. Remember I said it was two things? And the second thing is, she gave birth to Jesus. She, con she received Jesus into her womb, and then she gave birth to Jesus. And so you and I receive Jesus into our spirit, but we also not giving birth, but we have to present him to our world. Mary brought Jesus into this world. We got to take Jesus into our world. People say, Brother Joel, why do you go preach out on the streets? Amen. Let me tell you, I preach on the streets because there's a lot of people out there that, that have never been to church and they won't be in church for a long, long time. So wherever I get an opportunity, I want to birth Jesus. I want to give Jesus to our world, even if it's on the streets. Well, this morning there was somebody, just looked through the door. they one of the, the maids that's working here. She looked inside, she heard, and she hid away. And I dashed like a bullet towards her, caught her at the door, amen. And I asked her kind questions. How are you? What's your name? Where do you come from? And she told me everything. And I got to pray with her. She was already saved. Hallelujah. But I, I tell you, my friends, we just have to be Jesus to people. You don't always have to save them the first day that you talk to them. And, and that's good too. Don't get me wrong. But my friends, sometimes you just have to be Jesus to them. Remember that when you go to, to uh, what's the ticken, chick, uh, turkey dinner called? It's Thanksgiving. Amen. Next Thanksgiving. You don't have to preach to all your family. And if God gives you an opportunity to share, then you do. But how about just putting a smile on your face so people can see you're normal? Because all they know is Christians are weird, condemnation, frowning, problems, and looking for the soon great return of the Antichrist. Come on, somebody. Give people an idea that you're living above that. You're looking for the soon return of Jesus. You, uh, you, and just by your life. People will get saved by your face first before they get saved by your words. Come on, Elizabeth, I can tell you with me right here. Thank you, Jesus. Let them see Jesus in your life. My brothers and sisters, I want to try and do as much as I can in, in what we just read. But I want to take, to take you back to what we read when we go to Luke chapter 1. And it says, the angel appeared to the most unlikely candidate. F the first thing I want to say to handmaids of the Lord is sometimes God chooses the most unlikely candidate. You see, when, God, when, when, when God's going to use a Messiah, at least he's got to have a married man and a married woman and a ch child born from them. But that's not how God works. God comes with surprises. And God brought Jesus without the help of a man. Jesus was conceived supernaturally. God Almighty stepped out of eternity and into into time he spit, stepped out of unlimited unlimited space into space and time he put on human flesh and dwelt amongst us he was born of a virgin god uses the most unlikely candidates are you an unlikely candidate do you have all the odds stacked against you well you actually have the odds stacked again uh, for you because when the world writes you off, God says, that's exactly the kind of man or woman I need. I need a virgin. Her name is Mary. Hallelujah. I was talking to somebody this week and saying, you know, how God pull, draws people. Let me tell you, it's amazing. This week, I read of a certain banker. 
No, he's not a Christian, and maybe some of the things he did, I don't know. I've, I, but all I know is he went to college, and after college, with $1,000 from his tuition money, he started a brokerage. He invested into a brokerage. And then with that 1000 he was very smart, and he started working for this other brokerage, and he made $8,000 for the investors in his first day. And then soon, he was making $100,000, I think, every day for, for the different investors by just doing investing and trading and whatever. My goodness. And now his own net worth is $14 billion. Not $14 million, $14 billion. And we thought you got to be born rich to be rich. This guy only had $1,000 when he started, but he used his mind right. And he was wise, and he, and, and he did his investments right. And God, well, God, give God the glory for anything. I, I don't know if he, he's not a saved man as far as I know, but one thing I know, my brothers and sisters, if, if he could do that, just think of you who's got God in your life. Amen. 40, how much do you like? 14 billion. Goodness. I don't want to do that. Just imagine all the taxes I have to pay on that. <laughs> well, at least you've got 13 billion left after all is said and done. Can somebody say amen? Oh, come on. I'm preaching to somebody here today. I'm saying you might be the most unlikely person, but you're exactly the kind of person that God is looking for you to. Handmaid of the Lord. You may be male. You may be female, but you're a handmaid of the Lord. And God is going to call you out and bless you. And if you receive it, say amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Whew. Then the Bible says, and the angel came to her in verse 28 and said, Hail, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Blessed you are among women. You know that word hail really means grace. Hallelujah. It's related to the word charis or grace grace. And it says, you are highly favored. When somebody asks you, how are you? You know, some people, you're really scared to ask them how they're doing because they might tell you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but hey, instead of pouting, I don't want to preach my own message next week. How many of you were here last week? How many of you are not here? Let me see. Who are not here? You got to hear my message from last week. Stop pouting and start shouting. Amen. And so, my friends, when somebody asks you how you're doing, instead of pouting, start shouting and say, I'm blessed and highly favored. Turn to your neighbor right now and say, I'm blessed and highly favored. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You know, Heidi, my wife, She's, for the last few couple of months, she's just been speaking faith, speaking faith, speaking faith. No matter how things turn, happen or whatever, she just keeps speaking faith. And man, the, the things that comes out of her mouth just amazes me. Amen. And she, she speaks, Lord, thank you, Lord, that we've highly favored and blessed and got favor with God and man. She speaks these kind of things. Hallelujah. My friends, start speaking what God says. God says you blessed and highly favored. But I feel like my life is the opposite, Pastor Joel. Who are you going to believe? What you feel and see in your natural or what God says? God says you are blessed and highly favored. Turn to your neighbor one more time and say, I'm blessed. Turn to the other neighbor and say, I'm highly favored. Praise God. Come on, give him some praise, somebody. I'm blessed and highly favored. And then it says there, the Lord is with you. Blessed you are among women. Do you know what that speaks to me? Is don't think that you're blessed if you don't have the Lord with you. But don't think you're not blessed if you have the Lord with you. If you have the Lord with you, it says you're blessed among women. Amen. How many of you got the Lord with you? Let me tell you, you're blessed. Hallelujah. You're victorious. You're bl victorious. You might not have everything going for you. You might not 
be born into the aristocracy. How many of you know, even in America today, we have old-fashioned aristocracy. People just get lucky, so to speak, and get born in the right families and so forth. And, and, and it's not luck. God, God's always involved. But I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, there's a greater thing I want to tell you. And that is that God is at work in your and my lives. And it says, you are blessed and highly favored. Why? For the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Blessed are you among men. You've got the Lord in your life. You might not have been born in aristocracy. You might not be born with a silver spoon in your mouth. You might not be born born with everybody bringing whatever you need on a silver platter but you've got something greater than that you've got him in your life you've got the lord in your life and i tell you when you've got the lord in your life nothing can take that from you that silver spoon you're eating from right now that can fall by the wayside that silver platter can be lost somewhere oh my brothers and sisters but if you have the lord with you the bible says i will never leave you i'll never forsake you god will never let you go and when you're unfaithful he remains faithful he will be there he will guide you he will be there for you now that's something to shout about amen and you might be the one that winds up with that silver spoon. The Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. I like that, Pastor Apostle Spady. Are you, you quoted that one before it came out of my wealth. I'm like, man, I can just listen to him preach to me. And I'll just say what he says and I'll preach a good message right here. I said the wealth of the weak, and he said the wicked fade up for the just already. My friends, let me tell you, let the wicked work as hard as they want and have all the money they want and all the wealth they want because the Bible says it's coming to you and it's coming to me for the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, man, if Mother Elliot was here, she'd break out in some song about it, I'm sure. The wealth of the weekend, <laughs> laid up for the jars. <laughs> if she has a song like that, she'll make one up, hallelujah. How many of you miss her? Well, she's not missing us. She's, she's in the glory realm. She's with Jesus, and we'll catch up with her one day. But then the Bible says, when she saw him, she was troubled at the saying. Have you ever been confused when the Lord gives you a word? Amen. Amen. But don't be confused. Because eventually that word comes into manifestation. Just because God spoke it to you doesn't mean that you understand it right away. But believe what he told you. When God said to Abraham, you will be the father of many nations. If you've ever seen a confused 99-year-old kid, that was Abraham. Abraham, like me, father of many nations, he doesn't even have one kid yet. You know, not even one kid. Never mind a grandkid. I've heard that grandkids are wonderful. Amen. I heard a South African preacher when I was there in December. He said, if he knew our great-grandkids are, he'd have them first and then the children. <laughs> hallelujah but brothers and sisters sometimes God will tell something to you that doesn't make any sense and in fact if everything you hear makes sense it might not be God amen because God speaks of nations where there's not even a baby yet and God speaks about the birth of the son of God when you're still just a virgin Hallelujah. God speaks things we don't understand. He didn't say you got to understand it. He said you got to receive it by faith. You might not understand everything God's speaking to you, but receive it by faith. For faith is the substance of things. People say, I want a little bit more substance. Well, there you got it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence. Somebody said, I need some more proof. No, there it is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of 
things not seen by it the elders obtained a good report hallelujah somebody you will get your report if you believe God's word and not believe your circumstances give him some praise hallelujah hallelujah we don't believe those symptoms do we we believe the report of the Lord Hallelujah. Man, I got to take a little praise break here. Somebody help me for a moment. Hallelujah. I just have a couple of more minutes left. About, uh, and, and I want to just, I still want to get a couple of things in here that's important. But the Bible says the angel came and said to him, verse 30, it says, fear not, Mary. Now of all the things that the angel could tell her, what did he tell her? He says, fear not. Now, that's not the first time we see that in the Bible. Seems like everywhere an angel appears or God brings a word, it tells him, fear not. When Jesus later on was walking on the water and they saw Jesus, they thought it was a ghost. And they started crying out for fear. And what did Jesus tell them? Fear not. Be of good cheer, it is I. Why is he saying fear not? Because fear is a form of faith. Did you know that? Fear is a form of faith. And what you believe for will happen. So if you fear, your faith is going in the negative direction. In fact, to say, to say, uh, to say fear, I fear this, means I have faith in the negative direction. Amen. Oh, I'm preaching good right now. Some of you will get it in a minute. Fear is faith in defeat. Amen. Fear is faith in despair. Fear is faith in the wrong direction. Fear is faith believing that you're going to be defeated. You believe you're going to be defeated defeated you believe you're gonna not make it that's what fear is it's faith in the wrong direction but I'm telling you it doesn't take much more effort to use your faith in the right direction instead of fearing that things are gonna go wrong believe that things are gonna go right instead of believing that things are gonna be uh, defeated believe that things are going to be victorious instead of believing that God's going to forsake you believe that God's going to always be there for you instead of believing and 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 fearing in the wrong direction believing that you're going to be stuck in your circumstances that you find yourself in now for the rest of your life turn that around and believe no I'm not going to have it like that I've got a God on my side he gave me promises in his word and he said I will be with you I will bring you victorious and the Bible says thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph Woo, hallelujah always always means always it means you will always triumph praise God a brother over here Hallelujah. He had a car payment, five years payment. And he, he didn't want to be tight. He didn't want, seven years, and he already paid two years off. He had five years left, and he didn't want to be tied up by that. And eventually he just went to the, the owner at the dealership or whatever, and he told him, I, I, I'm bringing the car back. I, you know, and, and the man took the car back. And you know what he did? He gave him another car for free. Hallelujah. Might not be the Rolls Royce he was driving in. No, it wasn't a Rolls Royce, but it was a nice car. But it was a car that got him from point A to point B. Hallelujah. And Dave Ramsey says the paid off car is the new status symbol. Amen. The BMW is no longer the status symbol. The paid off car is the new status symbol. Come on, somebody. Hey, and that could be a BMW too. Can somebody say amen? Who says you can't pay off your BMW? Who says you can't pay off your Mercedes? Who says you can't pay off your Ford? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now, now, sometimes things don't go, wrong, go always go right. He was a little late here this morning because he had to spend 15 minutes fixing the what? The transmission? 
Yeah. At 82 years old, he got under that car with his nice suit and his white shoes, and he fixed her up, and he made it to church. How much would it cost to finish the whole thing? 500 will fix, will fix that. Well, we just pray that God will make it happen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. How many of you just say, just say, Lord, you're going to make it happen for the man of God. Amen. Now I'm sure the devil preached to you. I'm sure the devil told you you shouldn't take that good car back to the dealership. I'm sure the devil preached to you and said, you know, you're not going to make it to church. But you're not going to believe what the devil says. You're not going to believe what you're about to say. You're going to say, thanks be to God who always causes me to triumph. I will live and not die. I will be victorious in Jesus' name. Give him a shout, somebody. Amen. Woo, man. Praise God. Hallelujah. Woo, man, I tell you what. I'm ready to have church. I'm ready to have church not today, but tomorrow morning when I wake up. Church is not just on Sunday morning. That's just celebration. Church is on Monday when Pastor Joel's not preaching to you, when the devil's preaching to you, and you remember what Pastor Joel said from God's Word instead of what the devil tells you. Amen. Church is on Tuesday. Church is on Wednesday. When you're living the life out there, it's easy to shout in these four walls. Come on, somebody. But I want to see you shout on Wednesday. Amen. Stop pouting and start shouting. Don't. It's easy not to pout over here because, yes, Holy Ghost filled people with you. They're encouraging you with the Word of God. You're singing and dancing and praising God. You got the Word of God shouted. Oh, shouted, yes, amen. Uh, preach to you, amen. But let me tell you something. On Thursday, those people are not there for you. But the God that we preached about on Thursday, Sunday is the same God who's there with you, without the church, with you out on Thursday and on Friday. And if you can hold on till Saturday, Sunday morning's coming and you'll be in the house of the Lord to get a shot in your arm to go another week to have church in the marketplace. Now give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Praise God. Well, there's a lot I could say, but I'll leave that for Christmas. Verse 31, all that is great Christmas stuff. Verse 32, th verse 33, that's when I'm going to preach on eschatology one of these days. Hallelujah. But, but the Bible finally tells us in verse 35, it says, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. My friends, in Mary's case, it was the miracle of conceiving a child without a husband. It was the supernatural conception, receiving Jesus. And this happened how? By the Holy Ghost, the power of the highest. The Holy Ghost came upon her. Do you know how you're going to make it? Same old, same old way that Mary made it. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. The power of the highest shall be upon you, shall overshadow you. I don't know how anybody can go to, to a, a non spiritual church. Oh my goodness. You know, we take for granted what we have here sometimes. Until you go somewhere where the Spirit's not moving. And you're wondering why are people even here? But it's all tradition. And sometimes the churches are emptying out because people come to see God and He's not even there. He's somewhere else. My friends, let me tell you, make sure you're in a spiritful church. Anthony is not here, but Rebecca and Timothy and Trey. Let me tell you, I don't know one, where, where you are going to go in your life eventually. But when you choose a, a husband, Rebecca, and when you choose a wife, Anthony, and when you choose a wife, Timothy, and you choose a wife, Trey, 
Choose a spirit-filled one. Choose somebody who serves the Lord like you do and walk the walk of faith with you. Hallelujah. And then when you two to go to church together, don't find some dead church. Find a live church where they still preach the word, where they still feel the Holy Ghost, where they still speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives them utterance. Go where the Spirit of God is. Otherwise, you're not going to make it. Why? Because it says... How will this happen? The Holy Ghost will come upon you. And the, the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Let's just raise our hands and say, overshadow me, Holy Ghost. Let your power fall in my life. Well, the Bible tells us there, look what happened. When, when Mary heard this, well, it says one more thing she heard, verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. When she heard this, Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be unto me according to your word. That's all she needed to hear. She had questions, but she didn't have doubts. Sarah, Abram's wife, she had questions and she doubted. But Mary didn't have any, she had questions, but she didn't doubt. She just was like a typical woman. She wants to know the particulars. Amen. I tell you what, sometimes I hear something and I understand everything. But Heidi has to like now, where's the comma? Where's the dot on the I? How many of you know what I'm talking about? Amen. Everything, all the details. I tell you what, I'm glad I got one of those in my house. Otherwise, it'd be total chaos in our house. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Mary just wanted some particulars. But when she heard it all, she said, Let it be unto me according to your word. Do you know how it's going to be in your life? According to the word of God. Amen. If you have your Bible, your iPad with a Bible on it, or an iPhone with a Bible on it, just put it up in the air. Hallelujah. If you don't have any Bible or iPad and you've got the Word in your head, just pull yourself up in the hair and just shake yourself a little bit and say, I've got the Word in me, and I've got the Word with me, and it's going to be with me according to God's Word. So I'm going to end right now. Give me two more minutes. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, it's going to be with you according to God's word. The enemy has told you many lies. The enemy has preached to you. The devil has told you you're not going to make it. But I've got news for you. Once you receive God's word, you say it's going to be like God says. I will live and not die, but I will declare the salvation of the Lord. When you have it like God says, behold, I will provide for you according to my riches in glory by Christ Jesus. When you have it according to God's word, who says that uh, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And God's word that says that he, he by his stripes you are healed. And his word that says me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved, me and my house. Do you know how it's going to be? It's going to be according to your word, Lord. The enemy might lie to you, but you believe God's word. And God is going to pull you through. And when all is said and done, the judge of heaven and earth will put his hammer down and say it's going to be according to the declaration that I spoke unto my daughter, to my handmaiden, to my son, to my servant. Praise the name of Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. Let's give him one more praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Gary, you can turn the light off if you will, sir. Thank you so much. But we have this song, I give you my heart. Praise the Lord. You know what it really says? It says, Lord, I totally surrender to you today. But Brother Joel, I've already been saved for 30 years. But are you living the surrendered life? That's a difference. Have you asked Jesus to come in, not in your salvation, but into your circumstances, into your trials. And I know you have. But today, we're saying it to the Lord again. Lord, I give you my heart. Give you my life. 
give you all that I am, give you all that I'm not. I give you all my dreams and desires, give you all my pain, my trials, my disappointments. I give you my heart, oh Jesus. Thank you very much.